why I'm not showing the kids' faces in the videos anymore, why he was so annoying, we had a breakup, and then we got together in December. So I don't know how I feel about that. A little bit heartbroken. And it made me think about my biggest regret in medical school. <laughs> school drop off is done i am back home now to tidy and i'm tidying like really random stuff look at this right i walked into the living room and i have no idea why this is here like why is there this random chair with a banana on it i mean that's not the most random thing you'll find in my house but it's one of those things we were leaving for school in the morning and ella was like mommy's wearing a dressing gown and i was like that is so harsh because anyways i'm back that is so harsh because this is not a dressing gown it is my jacket the kids are so harsh yes little madam you want some attention while sister's in school yes. okay and today is a special day i'll tell you guys all about it in a moment <laughs> <gasps> oh, is that why you were crying? Oh, mommy. I'll tell you guys all about it in a moment, but I need to tidy up first. If only it was that easy, but it's not. You know, Ella was saying that I was wearing a dressing gown this morning. Yeah. She thought my coat was a dressing gown. <laughs> Anyways, you want to tell them why today is a special day? Let me just hold up. One second, low below, like this, where she's not gonna moan. It's because it's her fifth year anniversary. Wedding anniversary. Wedding anniversary. <laughs> it's actually been ten years that we've, we've, met. we've been together. Yeah. Well, it'll be. No, it'll be in ten December. It'll be in December. We we're officially together. That is a whole story on its own. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you want me to explain why he was so annoying, we had a breakup, and then we got together in December. Yeah. Should I tell them? We think, well, no, we, we started dating again back in October, but we officially were girlfriend and boyfriend in December. Lots to say. <laughs> I can tell you in the next video. But yeah, I was just talking to one of my friends, hello Eleanor if you're watching, and she was like, oh, what are you guys doing? Where are you guys going? And I was like, we're not really doing very much apart from putting the kids to sleep and going for a and meal yeah. in the evening. But I don't know if that's really lame yeah, or if that's We just... are going to have a babysitter before anybody thinks. Oh yeah, we're not just leaving them by themselves. Um, yeah. And I don't know if that's lame or if that's just what happens when you've been married for a certain number of years or been together for a certain number of years. I don't know. We it's stopped doing do... presents. We it's haven't done presents. It's nothing to do. It's just the fact that we've got kids in... You know. I don't think that should be an excuse. Maybe like now in the early days, but yeah. say if we didn't have kids, what would you have wanted to do? No, I would have done a whole day out or something. I don't know. Mm. All about presents. Mm. I think when it's anniversary and it's like something like a celebration that you share together, I don't know, like gifting each other a present. We could get a, like a mutual present, like a coffee machine or something. Yeah. We've been thinking about the bean to coffee um, machines but they're so expensive so I think what, like the cheapest is like four or five hundred pounds yeah that's the cheapest one exactly yeah. we're gonna have to hold off on that one yeah. anyways you guys might have noticed why I'm not showing the kids faces in the videos anymore um, and I'll tell you guys a little bit about why that is and the incident that led to that but I need to go pick up Ella from preschool so I'll catch you guys in a second On the other half, if I make it for her, Ella didn't eat her snack at preschool and the snack they have is usually butter on toast with some sort of like fruit or veg next to it, like cucumber or bananas or something. I don't know why she hasn't eaten it today, but she's come home and she's asked for it from me. So I'm just making some for her before she has some milk and goes down for her nap as well. I think Lena's sleeping too. And then it's time for mum to eat. So yeah, you need to change the battery of the remote, by the way. Because when I went into the car, I said the battery was low 
before like we drive somewhere and we can't drive back because it doesn't work so Ella's down for a nap as well and before I make myself something to eat I want you to show you something that kind of broke my heart so basically I got some photos printed by this company called free print so you I think every month you get like 45 printing allowances and you all you do is just pay for postage and um, I know we have the photos on our phone and it and everything but I'm a little bit old school and I like them printed to eventually put them into photo albums I can give to them because that's exactly what my mom did she put all our photos into photo albums and then a few of them she gave to us when we moved into this house so I've got like photo albums of me when I was a baby and like all my important birthdays and stuff and I just feel like it's really special and it's a lot nicer to look through than like on an electronic device I feel I don't know if I'm just old school but that's how I like it anyway so I printed that off and um we had like loads, loads from our holiday from last year from our last year anniversary and um Ella picked one photo this one of her and Sadal only I'm not in the photo there's plenty of photos where I'm in but this one I'm not and she wanted this to be hung in her play area so I don't know how I feel about that a little bit heartbroken not gonna lie anyways I'll show you another photo idea that we do on all of our anniversaries and everyone always loves it when I tell them. Yeah, so the photo idea that we do that everybody loves whenever I show them and they kind of try to implement it themselves. We're going to take another photo this year to add to the collection. So let me just show you what it's all about. Basically, this is our wedding day. So we had the registry, the reception, um, in the Turkish culture like the bride comes out of the house and there's like a dance that happens afterwards and then the henna and everything we had everything on one day I just wanted to get it all out on one day um because I don't like being the center of attention I didn't want too many like events <laughs> so anyways we took a photo we took that photo with us when we went to St Albans let me just there's a glare so let me just go this way um and then here so we took the photo this is our first year wedding anniversary. This is our second year wedding anniversary. This was literally, we got ready for work and took this picture in the garden before we left. Um, this is our third year wedding anniversary. Look, you can see we're holding the photos from the previous years. And then where is the other one? This lamp is broken by the way. And then this is our fourth year wedding anniversary with our third year wedding anniversary photo in our hands. So we took this photo, we took this photo with us on holiday to take this. So this year we'll be taking, we'll be holding this photo to take a photo with us. Um, and I will continue that and make like a little gallery wall of all the photos until we divorce or we die. <laughs> I don't know whichever one comes first um but yeah I thought it was like a really cute idea when I saw it on someone else's vlog uh, but the funny thing is I only get to I only get around to printing off last year's wedding anniversary and buying the same frame for it like a week before the anniversary that's coming up later so that photo that you've seen that we're going to hold today to take a photo I only printed it off this week and the frame came like two days ago um I'm really lazy when it comes to that kind of stuff but yeah if you want to see how the photo is going to look this year obviously without Lena and Ella's face then you can pop onto my Instagram which is the junior doc and see it there I'm just going to get something to eat because I'm really really hungry and it's one o'clock and then I'm going to tell you why I have stopped showing Lena and Ella's face in my videos and social media and stories and posts and everything in general. Just made myself Turkish coffee and sadal has gone out for his barber appointment, I think. Anyways, I'm just tidying up the kitchen as well. And um, I need to put away this pump. So you guys, some of you guys, if you've been watching me for a very long time, you may know that I had difficulties breastfeeding Ella and um, we got to three months with lots of hard work and then we switched to formula with a heavy heart but it actually worked out very well and we were quite happy that we made the switch because it just meant that it was 
the best for everyone. Um, and this time round, I faced the same struggles, the same ones. Anyways, so this company sent me a portable breast pump. It's called the Frapal. I'll link it below. And this is basically what allowed me to breastfeed longer than I could have because whenever Lena didn't want to breastfeed and I wanted to keep up my supply, I'd pop this on and I could still go about my normal day and express some milk and give it to her in a bottle when she was being extra fussy. So I'm very grateful for this product, but it's time for it to rest upstairs until somebody wants it um, and I can pass it on, pass the love on to them. Um, all they need to do is just sterilize and use it anyway so yeah with lena we've also switched to formula now and this time around i've not beaten myself up about it i've had the experience with ella of like how you know how she thrived on it um lena had loads of issues with like low birth weight jaundice um tongue tie we've had a long 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 stretch of struggles with her as well so it's time to say goodbye to breastfeeding Anyways, on the topic of the kids, I'll tell you a bit about why I've stopped showing their faces. So the thing that actually escalated that, when we were away in Turkey on holiday, um, there was a fake account that had been opened under my name um, and they were adding lots of people. And thankfully, one of my followers um, alerted me to this and messaged me on Instagram to say that there was this um, account on my name. Thank you very much um, if you're watching. Anyways, I went through this account and um, it just really grossed me out and just made me feel really weird inside that the photos that they had chosen to use from my account were all of the photos with either Ella or the most recent one where I put up a photo of Lena where I did like a little name reveal. And it made me feel really uncomfortable that there was somebody with bad intentions because this um, fake account was being used for like some financial fraud stuff. Anyway, so somebody with bad intentions were using photos that had my children in there to do these activities, basically. And I just felt really weird about it, really grossed out. And it, it was basically, it got to the point where I was like, right, now is the time that I need to just stop showing their faces on my stories, on my posts, on my videos. And then I was watching a video by, I think it was someone on YouTube called like Daddy Podcast or Dad Podcast or something. And I've watched loads of his videos. And he basically talks about family vloggers, which were a big thing. I used to watch the Sacconi Jolies, for example. Um, if you guys watch that, you may also know um, where they put up daily vlogs of their daily life and with their kids. And on the surface, when you first start watching it, um, you think, oh, it's just, you know, like so harmless. It's just their daily life and they're putting it up there and everything. But then when you think deeper into it, um, these kids haven't consented to being on the internet, having, you know, important things discussed like, just like, you know, showing their tantrums, talking about their potty training, talking about the difficulties in their life, just anything basically, because you don't know what's going to happen when they grow up and they, they themselves or their friends look back at these videos and basically use any of that content against them or or anything like that. Um, so I was very careful anyway, I, apart from saying, oh, I'm taking Ella to my mum's before work, I've picked up Ella and stuff like that. I don't really talk about, you know, her behaviour, um, you know, if she's upset with anything, I never record her if she's crying and things like that. So I've all, I was always careful anyway, um, but then after listening to you know, the breakdown of family vlogging and the actual thoughts behind, you know, having kids on the internet when they haven't consented. And then it also made me uncomfortable thinking, what if somebody recognises Ella from my videos and then notices what school they go to? And, you know, like, I know a lot of you or nearly nearly all of you are have a very kind heart, but there are people out there that don't. And it's just worries me to think about that aspect of things so for that reason I have decided to stop showing Ella's face and whilst I'm doing that I'm also just not going to show Lena's face either so that nobody actually can see 
their facial features mature and they won't become recognizable. Um, now, if you see me out and about, which happens a lot, um, I have loads of people actually approaching me saying um, they much watch my videos. Where was the last time this happened? Um, was it when I was in labor? One of the midwife students said that they watch my videos or I've had like, I've had so many, I've had somebody approach me in a nightclub saying they watch my videos. Somebody approached me when, um, in the park, somebody approached me <laughs> when I was in labor. Um, a few like medical students that, um, we have on placements at work. Um, so yeah, I've had like loads of interactions and it, and it really makes me smile. Anyways, we're going off topic. So there is that security aspect to it as well. And I know like with everything on my channel, you guys are going to be accepting and you guys will understand. Um, and I hope that it gives you something to think about if you have children and you post them on your social media as well. Yes, saying that I want to have this warm cup of Turkish coffee before Lena is due to wake up, which is in about 15 minutes. So I need to get her milk ready. And when I bring Lena down, I wanted to talk to you guys about how life has been, like an update on life is, like how life has been with two kids. Now that Ella's actually in preschool and I have like the morning to myself with Lena and it made me think about my biggest regret in medical school and what I would do right now to change the way that I was. So if any of you guys are watching and you're medical students, it might give you something to think about. Our babysitter is here and it's the one and only Edda. <laughs> we pay her with what? You just get kisses. But she is demanding. She wants us to pick her up. She wants us to drop her off. She even went shopping midway through the day and I had to go and pick her up from there as well. So ain't cheap, you know, when you think about the fuel costs. <laughs> cost cost yeah. Exactly. That's no joke. Anyways, I'm going to go upstairs to get ready now. Um, and then I need to get these two ready for our photo. Just come upstairs to get ready. I thought I have a, I'd have a little chit chat with you guys about my biggest regret in medical school. And um, I'm just trimming my eyebrows because they are growing up towards my hairline. Yes, and that is my work-life balance. So I think it was a mixture of coming from an ethnic minority family, being the first person in my immediate family to be studying medicine, the fact that I came from like a poorly performing like secondary school and sixth form um, and putting all those together, I had a lot of pressure on me um, about doing well and basically studying whenever and wherever I could. Um, and for that reason, basically didn't really enjoy uni, uni for its social aspect of things. I was very much like the person who would go into lectures and then like go to the library to get anything that I wanted and come home and study. And I think a factor of that was the fact that I didn't live out um, and I had like an hour's worth of travel to get back home to. Adding all of those together, I basically had like really bad work-life balance and even going for like a coffee at the end of the day of lectures, I was like, oh my God, this is time out of me doing some studying at home. And it really started stressing me out, not so much in the year because I felt like I was on top of things and I'd go out on the weekends with Sadal. So that was kind of my like treat for the week. Um, like, I don't know why I need a treat. I should just be like going with the flow, but anyways. And then what that meant was when it came around to exams, I had this immense pressure on me. So I put like a lot of meaning behind passing the exam. So passing the exam for me was like, if I don't pass, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's gonna be a failure. And if I fail, I'm not gonna be able to move to the next year and I have to repeat a year. And if I repeat the year and don't pass again, then I'm gonna drop out of medical school. If I don't finish medical school, I'm not gonna become a doctor. Everyone's gonna know that ESGY's a failure. Everyone's gonna think that, oh, look, she wanted to do medicine and she couldn't manage. 
I'm going to feel awful because that's the only thing that I ever really wanted to do and now I've lost it um, and like all of these like spiraling thoughts were going through my mind and it was it came to be very difficult for me around exam time to the point where I was crying non-stop I was very anxious it was affecting my sleep I think I think looking back now I probably had clinical depression and anyways somehow I got through my exams. Yeah. Hello. What? What are you doing? I'm trying to get ready. Hello. What do you want to ask? Yeah, I was going to tell you something. That's fine. Tell me what? Uh, I can't tell you on camera. Top secret. What? Uh-huh. What is it? You have to edit it out. No, go on then. Anyway, after that exciting news. <laughs> yeah, so I ended up having to get CBT. So my biggest regret looking back is that I should have focused, focus on your studies, obviously, that's the reason you're there, but I should have put a lot more focus on my work-life balance and methods of de-stressing, breaking down my workload, um, being realistic with my goals. So that's what I have taken forward with me because whenever I speak to anyone so you know I do sort of seminars and lectures about how to get into medical school um, and I might have one coming up soon actually so keep your eyes out and watch this space but yeah so my number one tip is always make sure you are able to get your work-life balance um, right in medical school because you can then transfer those skills when you're actually working um, and you've got loads of other commitments so you like you're in a relationship you have a family you have a like a household to look after not just a one bedroom that you rent out you've actually got like a whole house to look after and maintain um those skills come in like really handy if anybody is watching and you are in a similar situation make sure you actually schedule in if you find it difficult to take time away from studying make sure you schedule in some like time away from that and actually think about what you enjoy think about what your hobbies are as a person because i'm thinking back i probably would have been able to maybe get better grades if anything had i actually taken time out um and looked after my mental health the stress actually inhibited my learning and i think that's one thing that I struggled with because sometimes you know a bit of pressure a bit of stress is good it keeps you going keeps you moving keeps you motivated but when it passes that crucial boundary and it's starting to affect you and become depressing and, and cause anxiety then that's when you know you need to step back and readjust things anyways I don't even know what to wear because nothing fits me I still am due to lose my postpartum weight um and the reason being is because with the weight that I'm at at the moment, believe it or not, puts me in the overweight category in terms of BMI. And I know the BMI isn't the best way to think about weight and health, but for me, it works really well. Now that I have made peace with breastfeeding, I can focus on myself a little bit more and get back to healthy eating, um, physical exercise, I can get back to becoming my best self. So we're on our way out now. Um, the kids are sleeping and our babysitter Eda is gonna be looking after them. So this is my outfit that I'm gonna wear. We're only going to a Mexican restaurant and, but I just wanted to dress up. So just a white shirt with this blazer that I got from New Look and I actually, do you remember I hunted it down from like this one store in Edgeware somewhere? Mm. And I got it and I'm just pairing it with the only jeans that fit me in my wardrobe and it's super stretchy and it's quite tight here but I'm going to make do and I'm going to wear some heels and we're just going to go with the flow. And you can show yourself as well. Oh. <laughs> this is Are we going to find the kids in one piece when we come back at though? No. <laughs> Edda's going to eat them. Seriously. <laughs> Well, yeah, actually, you know? they actually, if they were like, if they were, ed you know, if they were edible, yeah, I think I would have like fully just gone ham on like Lena and Ella's cheeks and 
arm rolls by now anyways we are off guys i'll insert some clips of our meal here but if you want to see the final photo that we took um for the anniversary photo then you can go over to my instagram which i'm gonna put here and have a look um is your hand even showing when you're doing this yeah yeah look. Oh, okay. yeah and it's probably gonna be here i don't know Anyway, <laughs> um, it was actually a struggle to get the photo. Lena was crying and I wasn't smiling. My hair was doing all sorts and Sadal was doing like some weird constipated smile. But we got one slap in the end. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye. More like you don't like the uh, photos. Do you know what you would do? She yeah. was just zooming. Okay, this photo is nice. Zoom. Yeah, but everybody Which, does that. No, no, no. no, 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 no wait. Wait. Tell second. me you don't do this. No, when no. you're in a group photo, you look at yourself and you're like, if you look good, you're like, yep, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. You don't care if the other people are blinking, they've got their double chins out, whatever. You just look at yourself. And that's what I did naturally. That's that, No, not if you're going to put it on your Instagram. Like, Anyways, I mean, guys. Bye. Seriously.